Hey there, this video is gonna be whether or not the Canon R6 Mark II overheats or not. Now, I am very personally interested in figuring this out, as I'm sure a lot of you are as well watching this. And partly that's because <laughs> Canon has not had the best track record with cameras overheating, I know. So why are we having issues with cameras overheating? Well, a lot of this comes down to these cameras having higher megapixels and have an oversampled 4K mode. So in the oversampled modes, it generates a lot of heat as the camera's doing a lot of processing. There are a few ways that manufacturers get around this, one of which is by adding active cooling, like a fan, like in the R5C, for example, or they do a line skipped or pixel bin method to reduce the processing, creating a less detailed and sharp image, or we have limited record times, which is what a lot of us have been dealing with. And so it's always good to take a look and see what the camera manufacturers say, and then you have independent reviewers like myself test it and see if it stacks up against what they say. Now I do have to say here that Canon is very upfront with their record times and they do publish these numbers, which I think is great that they're very open and honest about that. And now we can go ahead and test it. So here's what Canon says. They say for the R6 Mark II, you can run 4K60 in the full frame 6K oversample mode for 40 minutes. You can run the 4K60 in the APS-C crop mode for 50 minutes. You can run 4K24 or 30 frames per second in the full frame 6K oversample mode with no limit in heating, which is great, it won't overheat. And then lastly, in 1080p, 180 frames per second in full frame mode, you can get 60 minutes or longer. Now, I tested all of these except for the 1080p 180 because I don't know who would be shooting 1080p 180 frames per second for a long period of time, but it could be something you wanna test. I also am always curious about how a lot of these cameras get their 1080p image, if it is an oversample or if it's some sort of other method to get from the 6K down to 1080p, I'm not really sure. Now, I have to say that I did do a first impressions video. If you haven't checked that out, please check it out. I got some great footage. I was really happy with the image that came out of the camera and the autofocus and everything. I was out shooting, it was probably around 55, 60 degrees Fahrenheit that day and sunny. Uh, it's early December here in North Carolina, so it's not super hot outside. I shot a mix of 4K24, 4K60, and some crop mode in there. I didn't get any overheating or any overheating warning. Uh, so I didn't really have an issue with that, but again, it wasn't that hot out there. Okay, so what I did notice, which I did talk about in my first impressions video, is that when you put it in 4K60, the camera does give you a warning and it says, under these settings, the camera may turn off suddenly in case of rise in internal temperature. So <laughs> I, it was kind of annoying, it says it every time you put it in 4K60, but it is letting you know that it could be a problem. Also, this camera does not have a high temp setting like you can find in cameras like the R5 and with the new firmware update and also a lot of the Sony cameras. There's a really nice feature in the R6 Mark II and it's also in the R7 is that it has a really nice warning indicator display. And this is really helpful because as the camera starts to warm up, it will show you how warm it's getting from zero to 10 bars. I really think this is great because you can really see how far you are along and you know how long it's gonna be till it overheats because in the past it usually just starts flashing and then it shuts off on the Canon cameras and very similar on the Sony cameras. So I really do like that feature. So for all these tests, I shot them here in my studio, which is probably on 70 or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I would have loved to have shot these outside in the heat, but again, it's early December here in North Carolina and it's warmer inside than it is outside. So for all these tests, I had the auto focus on, the auto white balance, trying to give the camera as much work as possible. I shot it in C-Log3 in 4K IPB. I also had it on a tripod with the screen open and I was just using an SD card and the normal battery here, so not an external battery. Now there are basically infinite ways to run these tests, but I wanted to do something that was a baseline, that was a very simple test on pretty much how most people will probably run this camera. All right, so for the first test, I shot this in 4K24, and this would be very similar to 4K30. This is the full frame mode, which is a 6K oversample. And as I ran this test, it just ran and ran and ran until the battery died at two hours and 17 minutes. I didn't get any overheat warning and the camera really didn't feel hot when I was done. So it's safe to say that I don't think overheating is an issue in 4K24 or 4K30, just as Canon stated. Now onto 4K60, and there's two different ways I tested this. One was the full frame mode, which is the 6K oversample. And so when I did this, it ran until 43 minutes and then it overheated. But I was surprised that when it did overheat, the camera wasn't super, super warm. So maybe it was being a little conservative, I don't know. But either way, Canon stated 40 minutes, I got 43 minutes. So again, pretty accurate for what they stated. 
And the last test I did was 4K60 in the crop mode. It is the APS-C crop mode. It ran for an hour and two minutes until the camera overheated. And again, it was warm, but it wasn't super hot. It wasn't gonna like burn my hands or anything. And this is against the 50 minutes that Canon stated. So again, coming in right as they stated. All right, so the results that I got really were pretty close to what Canon has stated. And for me personally, the biggest thing is 4K24, 4K30 not overheating because for me, the long run times are gonna be in 4K24 and that makes this a very viable video camera for me. Also, there's no 30 minute record limits as there was in the R5 and the R6 uh, version one. Now, overheating in 4K60 can be an issue for some people. Now, for me personally, I don't do long record times in 4K60. For me, it's you know getting a few B-roll clips or shooting wildlife, things like that. But I do know, you know, I have friends that do wedding videography that shoot the whole wedding in 4K60 in the summer. So that might be a problem for them. But keep in mind that the R6 Mark II is a hybrid camera. This is not a dedicated video camera and it does have great video specs, but there's always trade-offs when you have cameras that do multiple things. So again, for me, I'm really happy to see that 4K24 didn't overheat. Now there's been a lot of discussion out there about whether or not they could have fixed the original Canon R6 overheating problem with a firmware update because they did that with the R5 and that's a fair question. But I just don't know the answer and I'm not an engineer and I've never used the original R6. But what I do know is that with that new firmware update on the R5, when you ran the camera for a long period of time, the camera got super hot to the touch, like it was very hot. And so I think now the fact that I ran this camera for over two hours in 4K24 and it wasn't super, super hot, like it was warm, but it wasn't gonna like burn your hand or anything. I have to think that there's something different in terms of the hardware, if it's the sensor, the processor, heat sinks, those sorts of things. But again, 4K24 doesn't overheat, makes me really happy. So how does the R6 Mark II compare with the other Canon cameras out there right now in terms of overheating and run times? Now I tested these cameras in the studio here in a very similar setting and I'll leave links to those videos down below if you wanna check them out. So what you saw in this video was the R6 Mark II will run until the battery dies, two hours and 17 minutes with no overheat warning and the camera wasn't very warm. Now the R5 after the latest firmware update ran for an hour and 40 minutes and the, the battery died. It didn't overheat, but the camera was super warm. And then I also tested the R7, which ran for two hours and 15 minutes when the battery died. But in that situation, I did get three bars out of the 10 bars for the overheat warning. So pretty similar here in a studio setting, all these cameras will run until the battery dies. It was nice to see that the R6 Mark II did have quite a bit of battery life too for running for well over two hours uh, until the battery died. So that's great as well. Well, there you go some basic overheat numbers and run times. And if you wanna see some actual footage of the R6 Mark II in that first impressions video, please go check out that video over there. Otherwise, please hit subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.